Hi, my name's Allison, and I'm pretty much just your average person, just like you. Well, maybe not with some things. See, I live in San Francisco, California, land of the alternative, well, everything. So when Next Agenda asked me to host a video at a clean energy conference, I thought, who better? But first I wanted to do a little legwork and see how much energy I personally was using daily. I went to watson.com to see what my carbon footprint was. Whoa, I'm using almost double the average user. I guess I'm not that average after all. I have some things to learn. Which brings me to here. I'm in the Presidio, lovely San Francisco once again, in front of the Next Agenda conference. I'm actually told it's not a conference, and it's not a think tank, but it is a meeting of the minds. Some of the brightest and best engineers, scientists, entrepreneurs, bloggers, social media people are all going to gather today in there to talk about this clean energy issue. Or more specifically, can we go completely clean in 10 years? So over the course of the day, we're going to interview people, we're going to sit in on breakout sessions, and we're going to hear some speakers talk about, is it possible, and if so, how? I'm pretty excited about it. Let's see what happens next. I grabbed a name tag and a seat and settled in to hear Peter Leiden, the founder of Next Agenda, break down the project. This is the Clean Energy Challenge, and what we're doing with the Clean Energy Challenge is we're really bringing people together to start figuring out, or to start putting a lot of interesting creative work into how America could get all its electricity onto clean energy as fast as possible. Uh, a lot of you are from the technology and energy, energy space, but a lot of you also have more social science backgrounds, finance, politics, media, and so really you are the program today as much as anybody. We're getting you folks together in a physical room where people can really collaborate and really connect in a different way to basically brainstorm. Think of it as a fundamental way to start to rough out the train of what it would take to do that. We are in a really critical moment in the life of our country. And people like yourselves have a lot to offer and we all have to start to pay attention to this. The first order of business was to identify the problem. Most scientists indicate that if we do not reduce our carbon footprint as a species by up to 100% by 2050, we will not be able to continue to exist on planet Earth as we know it. The easy way to look at this is to think that the way we have been gathering our energy has been so far from a finite resource. We are concerned that there could be serious political instabilities as well as a decrease in the quality of life as the resource, as the energy resource goes down. We can either ass assign doom to the future generations or we can start trying uh, to do something about it now. And that's what I think everybody in this room is trying to do. Energy efficiency, just about every study shows it's the number one activity we need to pursue globally to address climate change. It's the one that has the technology here and now. The day started with presentations from some of the brightest minds in energy. Solar electricity can be grid parity today with no fundamental investment in technology. The investments have already been made. The question about wind power is not really how much do we have, how much can we count on it, but mostly how much do we want. We broke up into smaller groups to discuss various means of clean energy production, like wind, solar, nuclear, and what? Carbon capture and sequestration. Grassroots ownership. Biomimicry. True cost accounting. Right away, I noticed that Next Agenda had some pretty cool things going on outside of just people talking. There was this amazing designer who was drawing what the presenters were speaking about as they said it. And then there was the fact wall, which I couldn't wait to contribute to. But I still had to let things settle in a bit. During the second half of the day, we dug into the social side of the issue. Entrepreneurs, social media gurus, and members of the political realm had their chance to give their take on what the scientists had said earlier. What I'm seeing come up over and over again here today is this entrepreneurial spirit that everybody is bringing. People from the social side who can really say, you know, this is all well and good that we have the science, but what's it gonna take to get people to actually support it? The projects we do have to be economic. 
or they simply won't occur. If we can find the uh, profit motive in um, creating clean energy, creating energy efficiency technologies, um, people will do it. One thing that really impressed me about Next Agenda is the radical self-reliance of the participants. They are ready and willing to solve this problem with or without legislation. I caught it with Eli Perazer, the president of MoveOn.org, to hear his thoughts on the matter. People often think you can create these large changes just by having a good idea, you bring it to Congress, uh, Congress does what you ask and then you're done. And actually I think if you look at the history of really big changes like, like the clean energy economy, um, it takes a large scale uh, popular movement before Congress is ever going to really take those big steps. They have to know that people want this, that people are there and they're ready. What I'm learning today with Next Agenda is it's exactly the type of um, process and gathering we want to have. And then what I hope, they make a real commitment to be in the space of clean energy and to make a change and make a difference, because that's what we need in government. After the presenters, Next Agenda put together an exercise that I can't believe I've never seen before. Participants had the opportunity to briefly present their own individual solutions to solving the energy crisis. One of them I thought was pretty awesome. Imagine if you could sell unlimited amounts of energy that you generate on your prop property from renewable sources back to the grid. By the end of the day, everybody was exhausted, including yours truly, but excited. You could really feel that good work had been done today. People were exchanging numbers and talking, and dare I say it, people were optimistic. I'm still learning about the challenges we face, but to hear the solutions and to hear them stacked, it's very empowering. You bring smart people together and put them against the problem in a serious way, uh, and we're gonna, they're going to come up with passion and innovation and ideas, and I think we're going to basically pull this up. I think we're going to move the ball here. You can look at it two ways. You can look at it as, you know, it's too much, there's no way we can change, we're all doomed, you know, go home and, uh, and uh, have a beer, or we can try and do something about it. The general feeling today, I think, is one of excitement and one of hope. People are extremely encouraged that there are so many like minds that are so intelligent and so dedicated to making the world a better place and a cleaner place. I think that there's also a bit of trepidation and people are cautiously optimistic. They want to know that this conversation is going to continue beyond these walls, beyond pats on the back, and beyond the community that has been created today and that people are able to continually educate their peers, educate people who don't necessarily agree with them and continue to come up with solutions to be continued. To get involved and to see where the energy project goes from here, go to www.nextagenda.com.